Welcome to uh, week two of advanced type. And as you see, come here on my screen, I'm gonna use my screen to do this today. Um, and I think there's gonna be probably two or three little videos that go along with today. But I wanted to do general um, type crit on these posters that you guys created for the first week. So the first thing is, is we're just gonna have a general one. And as you see in, on the blog, and you guys have been commenting about each other's work, which is great, and I want you to continue commenting as, as things start pouring in. Um, I wanted to alert you to sort of how um, you all did this assignment, which is you select a text that was appropriate for you, that you like, and you sort of try to interpret it. Now, this assignment was literally all about testing um, your formal typographic skill set not conceptual or thinking or ideas or concepts, really just formal typography, how you set it, how you work with it, um, and how you make it be effective, composition, hierarchy, contrast, tension. So many of you, I think, are on your way there, but I think there's a few things that we have. So one of the things about typography is typography is very detailed, and it's a lot about the tiny details. So. I want you to pay particular attention to that. And this is something that we all struggle with um, when working with typography. But you really have to develop that, um, that eye for detail, the tiny little, little, little things. Um, how you use the rags, how you use um, spacing, the letting, how you use contrast in your composition, the size of the type. For example, some of you are using 12 point type, which is, usually what Microsoft Word told us is standard type size. So body copy type size usually goes from eight to 10 points. That was in your reading packet that you were reading. Um, keep in mind that usually you have 60 to 70 characters per line of type. That is sort of the accepted norm that most humans can handle. Um, I want you to start thinking, why is your letting so open? Why is it so close? Why is it so tight? You know, it's a visual thing. What's comfortable for the reader? To, to be able to read. The same thing, some of you have a lot of letter spacing or you track down things. There's a difference between letter spacing and word spacing and be aware of that. InDesign allows you to track things out very easily, but you need to be able to look at the type and see if it makes sense. Um, even rags on the right-hand side, some of you have rags on the left-hand side. I want you to think about what happens to a rag on the left-hand side. That's not sort of normally how we read. So you have to adjust those rags. And again, the idea of rags is that you're trying to get a, the most uniform rag you can, the most natural way of reading. And whether you use hyphenation or not, that's up to you, but it's a specific style. Also, those of you that justify type, be aware that when you justify type, you just need to be very careful of the rivers in the type, right? Um, for example, here on... Sh Oops, sorry about that. I have them. I'm not working that way and I messed up already. See, so I have all the posters out here so that I can actually move around and I just try to be funny about it. But here we go, right? So these justified letters, these justified columns, one, this gutter here is really tight. And the spacing here, the relationships, I see hyphen issues here, right? And then I want you to pay particular attention to widows. The spacing after paragraphs, you know, what do you do with it? So be very careful with that. Um, and how do you use, you know, letting here, look at this. Does this crash? Is there a particular reason why you're doing that? Right? I want you to, for this week, no typography in shapes, lines, or anything. I want you to focus on typesetting really well, rags of type, okay? Um, I'm also wondering, for example, here in your composition skills, Sean, you, for example, you did this, and although it's a good attempt at trying for it, for example, there is dumb quotes right here, right, which are inch or foot marks. Smart quotes are curls, so make sure you are all doing that. Several of you did that. The other thing is compositionally, what happens here is, is that you have one, two, three, four elements, one, two, three, four elements, it crosses itself out, there's no tension, right? So I need to start thinking about that. What is the difference between this larger body copy and its letting? What is versus this copy? Contrast, is there an ex, ex, explicit contrast between the type sizes? For example, some people say, oh, I wanna go for 12 point type and then 14 point type. That's not, there's not enough difference there. Same thing um, when you are pulling, for example, here, 
in this example, where we have two different body copies, one Beatrice Warder, one Emil Ruder, the type sizes, I'm not sure that these column widths work. You have these left rag issues here. And then what happens is the type size are supposed to not be really close to each other, or are they almost supposed to be the same type? One is a sans serif, one is a serif. So you want to start picking, if you're trying to go for the idea that these are two different speakers, two different voices, two different thoughts, two different um, whatever, you need to make sure that that contrast is obvious and not being afraid of it. I think a lot of you are afraid of contrast. <coughs> Excuse me. Right? These here, these paragraphs here, these feel really loose. And then look at the spacing between the paragraphs. Is that enough for a reader to tell that that's a different paragraph? I'm not quite sure. Um, this here is going into the really good, in a really nice direction, but I'm wondering, is there more that can be done to push this further, right? I, don't, I think there's a lot more. There's some kerning that needs to happen up here. When you have typed this large, you need to kern. Okay, this type I think is aerial. You wanna be very careful with it. This composition here feels a little disjointed to me, partly because it's got two columns, right? And we have a large hook. Have you ever tried to enter the Long Black Branches by Mary Oliver? There's a hook there, right? So in your composition, you have that thing that hooks you into it. But I feel like it could, have, could use a lot more explicit um, organization here, right? How do you organize this? So I want, this week is all about thinking about hierarchy and contrast in your composition. And I'm gonna have another small lecture that I'm gonna put up there so you guys can start looking at that. Um, one of the things here, for example, if you use all caps and initial caps, why are there C-R-O, big, huge caps, and then the other ones are small? When you do small caps, you make sure that everything at the beginning is, is a small cap. And usually you wanna do, that's what you wanna use, letter spacing out because small type letter space is very easy to read, right? So you, you wanna do that. Bullets, we're designers. We need to start figuring out what to do with bullets. That's something from the business world. Business world decided that bullets were really cool. We designers need to start thinking about that, right? What happens here? Here's the issue of the lower caps again, the big uppercase, and then the slow, the small uppercase, what happens if this is all small lower caps? Start thinking about that. Or does this need to be small lower caps? Why, right? Um, although I like this graph of text, I'm wondering, is the letting too much? And again, that's a question you wanna start looking. The other thing that I wanna to say to you guys is, um, one of the things is, we're working in many ways denotative, which means we're doing pragmatic typesetting right now. This is sort of, you can consider this to be traditional on the grid. And what we're gonna to move to in the class is gonna be connotative, which is moving towards more expressive typographic um, projects. So I want you to start thinking about that. Think about the composition, okay? Usually number of odd elements makes it interesting because you get tension, right? Think about the hierarchy, what's your hook? Where do you want the reader to look and how do you navigate us through the composition? Think of contrast, extreme. Okay, and think of tension in your composition, which gets things interesting. So this week, again, you're gonna be working with the same copy, but you're gonna be playing with it further and pushing yourselves more. You're making posters. These are posters. These are not just flyers with text. I want you to start thinking about that. I want you to make the most beautiful, gorgeous posters with this content. Okay, so I'm gonna make another video for everybody.